Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow up 37, Nasdaq up 19, S&P's up five and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the first hour. Don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, the way you get this newsletter, you come over to our website, at TFNN, and you're going to see right in the featured content, you hit Mastering Probability. You can hit subscribe. Uh, the newsletter is uh, 100 $149 for one month. You can get it six months at $695, which is a savings of $199. You can get it for a year, folks, at $1195, which is a savings of $593. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Check it out on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes, what's going on, brother? Well, I, I thought for sure that the citizens of the United Kingdom voted for Brexit. So, so what's their deal? I, you know, and you know what just come across the tape. So listen to this, folks. This is intense. And that's why this dollar probably wants higher price. The speaker, this just happened about 20 minutes ago. So the, okay. uh, the speaker of the House of Commons dealt a major blow to Theresa May's Brexit strategy by effectively banning her from bringing her deal back to Parliament tomorrow for the third time. The surprise moves makes it more likely that the UK will have to seek an extension for the European Union membership. I mean, yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, and they're just letting Brussels, in essence, push them around. So it's always interesting, yep. you know, what politicians do or they think that, uh, you know, it's, it's as if they're changing the will of the people. And what, oh, they what, are? Yeah, right. Or right. not fulfilling the will of the people, for sure. Yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah right. absolutely. Yep. And so uh, the way that that impacts um, all of us as far as traders is because everything is interconnected around the world. When we take a look at markets, as, as we point out each and every day, as you were speaking about it before I even came on, just taking a look at the U.S. dollar and the euro and the great British pound. Uh, each of those, though, also in flat, in, in, uh, each of those also impact uh, markets around the world. And so this first page that you and I are looking at, this goes back, uh, this is long, long term, so this takes us back to the 2009 lows. Okay. And on here, Tom, if, you just, if we just focus on the upper left-hand corner right now, yep. I'm just showing the ETF. So I'm just showing ETFs out here, as people can also do this. So we're looking at the Dow Diamonds. And did I grab the right page? Oh, I did not. Son of a gun. Hold on a second here. My apology. Okay. I went to the wrong spot. Um, uh, is this it? There we go. Okay, so now we're at the right spot. Actually, this, in this case here, I'm still looking at the Dow. I've got the futures contract in yes. the upper left-hand side. And it's priced in both dollars. That's the very top line. And the percentage there, about 380% uh, increase over the 2009 lows, approximately. Okay. And, and I use the same starting point, and I price the Dow in euros, the Dow in yen, and the Dow in pounds. And it shows you the percentage rate of change since that low out there. And what we can see is actually, even though we've had an amazing performance for the Dow priced in dollars, it is the Dow priced in euros that has been the leader out there. And the Dow in yen and the Dow in, in pounds. So what I want folks to understand out there, what this is communicating to at least me, is that the global flow of capital is focused here in the United States. Now, we don't really just stop there because what folks need to do is actually see the entire screen where I do the exact same thing and we take a look at the other major indices out here, Tom. So we can take a look at the DAX. And so its performance, as you say in U.S. dollars, about 185% move off of the bottom versus 379% for, um, uh, for the Dow. Or we can take a look at the FTSE. And if we take a look at the FTSE, we can see in dollars, U.S. dollars, only an 85% increase versus 379. Or we can go over to the Shanghai, uh, and we can take a look at it, a 30% increase off of that same bottom. Or we can take a look at gold. So this takes a look at bonds, gold. Uh, it takes a look at the Hang Seng, the Shanghai Emerging Markets, uh, Light Sweet Crude. So uh, uh, a, the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. And what we can see is the performer out here is the Dow, and it's it's that type of um, it's that type of shenanigans, I suppose, that goes over in Europe, uh, where they're not fulfilling the will of the people that creates this lack of confidence. So what's happening is the big money out there, the big the big money, the big banks, the big wealth, 
uh, that's being managed, they're, they're shifting and they're focused. Now, this has been going on since 2009. If we take a look at a shorter term time period, we're going to see the same type of thing out there, uh, that it is still the flow of capital is coming into the United States. So that really bodes. So while it may get crazy out there, um, and I'm not saying that our markets won't go down, I'm just saying that it still is boding well for the U.S. stock market. So, and to put that in perspective, just to compare the U.S. stock markets, um, to other markets around the world. Here I've got the ETF structure. So here I've got the Dow Diamonds in the upper left-hand corner. And where these trend lines begin takes us back to the all-time high inside of the Dow. And so here we're looking at Canada, China, India, emerging markets, Japan, Germany, uh, Australia, and the uh, UK. And so we can see that our price, we've made it nearly back to the all-time highs out here, or, or at least back to the January highs, really. That's, that's really the red line on my chart chart gets us back into the January 2018 highs out here. But we can see that it's still, and this is just looking at these instruments Tom priced in dollars out here. But what we can see is just the, the outperformance of the U.S. stock market compared to these other markets out here. So it gives a pretty good perspective, a little shorter term picture, because here I'm just going back to January 2018. And uh, in that bottom line inside the Dow Diamonds, uh, is taking a look at the lows from February. And I've done that equally for each of these charts out here so people can get a feel for just simply the performance and using using the U.S. market or using the Dow as our benchmark for trying to identify what's happening inside the markets. I'm going to switch to this chart here, and this just takes a look at the Dow and just the euro. And so if we take a look at the Dow, it's we are in a clear consolidation. Now, this is a monthly time frame. I really like using the body of the candles to help us identify what the real message of the markets is. So for me, even though we made a, a much lower low than 23,377 for the Dow back on December 24, 26 out here, I still see the consolidation range in the 26.6 to about 23.3 out here. And until we break the consolidation, out here, we can easily go back and revisit the low of the consolidation. So whether it's the 23.3 or it's the low of December, both of those remain intact. And when I take a look at what the Dow is doing in euros, we're maybe about 4% off of the high, Tom. In euros, they're about 2% or less off of the high. But neither of these have broken out. So until there's a breakout, um, the consolidation exists. And as we know, consolidation can last for a real long time. Um, what I've also been doing during my uh, shows and inside the newsletter has been taking a look at some of these indices and taking a look at their horizontal trading ranges. It's a uh, workshop that is an archive workshop that I've done before that subscribers are going to gain access to next Wednesday. And if we take a look at the Dow here, if we're wondering, you know, why did the Dow find support? at the lows back in uh, December, we can see that price came right down to a horizontal trading range boundary line at about the 21,670 level. Now we are above this 25,425 area. That's a key level for folks to be watching in price. Now somebody might look at this chart and say, but, but price didn't stop uh, at the, uh, and this is a monthly time frame we're looking at okay. out here. Um, it didn't stop at the uh, horizontal tri uh, uh, trend line, or, uh, trading range boundary line, but it did really stop when I put the weekly out here, this 26,984. So these horizontal trading ranges are really cool tools, and uh, so I look forward to teaching subscribers about how to use these. So uh, long term, I think things bode well for the U.S., but we're still in a consolidation. And so and those loads uh, could still be in play. And folks, the way you get Steve's newsletter, come over to our website at TFNN. You go to Featured Content, Mastering Probability, hit subscribe. Steve, thanks so much. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come